Well, hello and welcome to the Suffer Club. I'm very excited about today. Last video, I showed you this ride that me and a group of friends did. And like I said last week, there we're going to be on and talk about today's ride. But I'm just going to jump right into it. I'm very excited. I've got my friends on remotely in the upper left-hand corner. We have Eric uh, and then we have Wes, and then we have Sam down in the middle. And real quick, guys, give a little bit. Uh, we'll start with Eric, who you are, and uh, like how long you've been riding bikes, or what your role, what what you were doing there. Yeah, no, I appreciate it, Aaron. Uh, Eric Osterhus, I've uh, been riding since I was a kid in all different capacities, but actually just picked up my gravel bike maybe six or seven months ago now i basically had been on pavement day in and day out before that and loved road riding but more and more i just found myself seeing little side trails that i wish i could go down and you know skinny wheels don't always do the best on that so picked up a gravel bike started bike packing a lot and just uh, been going from there and yeah uh, samuel reached out to me with the idea for this trip and it was a it was a no-brainer uh, yeah, it, it, it was an ideal bike that you had definitely uh, for this because we'll get into a little bit later why a gravel bike is a necessity. But next we have Wes and Wes. We're just going to say that Wes was uh, the reason I finished the ride. I can guarantee you that Wes is the only reason why I finished the ride. Uh, but Wes, uh, tell us who you are and yeah, what you did on that day. Yeah, so Wes Maxwell. Um I, I basically drove a support vehicle uh, just in case there were any uh, down issues with the bikes or with the riders. Uh, I was there to either, you know, we could fix the bike. We could, if they needed to stop riding for whatever reason, I could get them back to where they need to be. Um, I also hauled food and water, plenty of necessities, but then I also uh, documented a lot of the trip with photos. Um, so I was, I would drive ahead. I would, uh, meet the guys along the way shoot photos uh and kind of document the whole trip yeah it, it, you didn't just like uh like a support if you we'll get into a little bit later but it was a big deal to have you on there uh to bring food but we'll show your instagram a little later and talk about the photos but he did a great job snapping some photos that describe the the ride very well like i i did some video but mm. everything in video looks very like flat like it's very difficult to show elevation and to gain uh but you did it very well with the perspective and then the next person we have on here is the madman behind this adventure and that is mr sam tell us about yourself sam well hi guys um yeah yeah i was the guy that that sort of pitched the idea lucky enough to have friends who are willing to uh, <laughs> uh, go along with it. Um, but yeah, I've been riding mountain bikes for uh, over a year now, probably 18 months. Um, I'm a kind of a glutton for punishment. So I've been trying to push the envelope, go a little longer, go a little farther, go, you know, climb a little more every, every so often. So this was definitely that ride, um, you know, for the end of the year. And, um, you know, it's 75 miles and whatever it was, 7,000 feet of elevation. Yeah. It, you know, was the longest ride I've done, um, biggest ride I've done. So yeah, it was uh, everything I wanted it to be. <laughs> yeah, so let's, so if you watched the last video, you saw the ride, but what it, what would, if somebody wanted to know about this ride, what would they search or how did we find it? Um, mm -hmm. I think Sam heard about it, but then Eric knew a little bit about it. Tell, like one of you guys just kind of take take the reins there. Yeah. Um, I ran across it on bikepacker.com because I was just looking up, you know, routes in the area. I spent a lot of time backpacking or camping in, in Linville and, in, in, uh, Wilson's Creek area. So I was looking at, you know, any trails around the, in that area. Um, the route itself is called two gorges, um, starts in Morganton, North Carolina and runs up, um, you know, into Linville Gorge, which is a wilderness area over across highway 180 um 181 into wilson's creek which is another sort of pisgah national forest and then back down towards morganton um 75 miles 55 60 percent is gravel um they say 6500 feet of elevation we <laughs> clocked it around 7,000. yeah 
Um, yeah, it's, it's a tough ride. It's, um, not to be underestimated. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think we reached 5,000 feet of elevation probably in the first 30 miles. Like the first half is pretty weighted. Um, it's, it's built as a, um, overnight bike packing route. And that's, you know, how it was prescribed on, you know, bikepacker.com. Um, you know, me being me and you being you, we sort of, uh, didn't want to take it the easy route the first time. So yeah. um, why not do it in a day? Yeah. Um, that, that's why we're talking about it on the suffer club because we have a Sam, like you said, is a glutton for punishment. And I, I, I this is the first time I'd ever met Eric and I'd met a uh, Wes one other time on a mountain bike ride, but I had no idea what this, what I'd gotten myself into. Like I, I knew nothing about it. And so like we come out of the gate one, it's super cold. Uh, and I, I think Eric, did you know a little bit about this ride? Just from what I had seen on, on bikepacking.com as well, you know, like Sam mentioned, they do a pretty good job of cataloging these types of trips and, and everything I read there was, you know, framing it up as, as kind of one of those two day overnighters. And, uh, and so when he mentioned it as a 24 hour adventure, you know, a little, a little of that pit on my stomach feeling, especially when you read the elevation profile and realized, man, this thing is super front loaded. Like yeah. you're working right out of the gate. And, uh, and so, yeah, most of it was a mystery, but, uh, but yeah, that elevation piece was, was no joke without a doubt. Yeah. And so, we we get there on that day which we did it in december which already is risky to do a long ride at 8 a.m start time 8 a.m because most likely it's going to be sub freezing temperatures and we get there and it's 28 degrees and it is like 28 degrees cold like right and you're awesome. you're starting out and and so i think all of us cyclists you're kind of balancing this how much clothes do i wear and i know i'm going to get hot as soon as i climb but then like but i'm freezing like i cannot feel my fingers and so it was like we started out and uh wes was was there and a lifesaver because i think I, I i started out and was rolling for like maybe two miles and had to stop and get another jacket because I was mm-hmm. uncontrollably shivering and we had just started. <laughs> we had just started. And so uh, I have Wes's photos um, that I'm going to show right now. Like uh, this is when we just showed up. And so Wes had documented these. And so uh, me, I, I, like he, he did a great job. Um, it's Wes, it's X Wes X. Uh, on Instagram and he just did a great job of kind of documenting and if you get a chance go over and read his write up because he did like, the photos are great but the write up is probably like even better it's it's just so good um and paints a paints a true picture of what we were experiencing so um so Wes like you are a mountain biker Right. And, and, an adventure, an adventure guy. I mean, just coming back from Montana, you're a whitewater, uh, rafter. Is that what, what, what they really call it? Rafting, I do it all. Yeah. Like seriously adventure, like adventure man. Um, and so we start up one Oh five and I think we were talking at, at some point in time when we're climbing and you talked about how good the road conditions were, um, because you, you travel this, you've traveled up this road quite a bit. Like right. how how bad could have that ride been compared to what it was? Um, that that road can be from any condition, from like man, like smooth gravel, like as nice as someone's gravel driveway, to a rutted out mess that you need four wheel drive to pass it. Um, so there are definitely areas on that road where I thought for sure on a climb you guys are going to have some serious trouble just with ruts and especially the uh aaron and eric on the gravel bikes Mm -hmm. because of how just nasty that road would could have been but as we went up man you guys couldn't have picked a better time it seems like they had just graded it um after all a really crowded fall season they had up there yeah and, and so you can see the pictures that i just showed of of the road 
But we also showed up, and I think it was opening day of Black Bear. Is that it was, yeah. it was, <laughs> there were definitely bear hunting going on? That was about the only people on the road. Yeah, I mean, like all of a sudden we see uh, a Tesla come by, and I'm like, what? What do we do? like? At one point in time, and to kind of paint, is the road is called 105, right? It's Highway something. Highway 105. Highway 105. Mm -hmm. And at one point in time, I clocked 42% grade. Now, it was a little pitch, but it was a super steep area. And kudos to Samuel, because you did not get off your bike one time when me and Eric are... Like, we're to the point of it's not even like who cares about walking? Like, it's either walking or we get in the truck because it's that bad. And, and do, I, I do recall one point on that road, it was about a mile in on the road. It was kind of the first stop with the overlook. And you guys had just gotten a taste of 105. Because it's, if I'm right, Aaron and Eric, you guys had never been up there. No, right? no, I had no idea. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember you saying that is the steepest hill I've climbed and we're one mile in on the road and I'm going, there's 13 more miles of that same hill <laughs> before it ever pans out. <laughs> Eric, when we hit the gravel, what was your thoughts? Yeah, so like like Wes just mentioned, that's the first time I had ever seen that before. I grew up in Charlotte. I've been around here for years. Uh, you know, I've played a lot. I've been around in and around Lindell, but I've never been on 105 before. And so we get there even before like that kind of leaving Morganton after Lake James, that first big hill we hit. We're like, all right, time to start working. And then and then like Wes mentioned, man, those first couple of first couple of pushes on 105 five they they woke you up quick and and once i started pedaling slower than i knew i could walk it was a no-brainer to jump off and just start kind of turn it into a 50 50 hike and bike and uh i knew i knew it wasn't going to stop anytime soon you know we we spent most of that morning climbing and, and there was even that one part that uh they had to pave because it was just simply too steep to remain a gravel road like yeah. there's still really catch traction without some pavement under you um yeah, it was it was tough. Yeah, it, it it it's a hard road, but it just never seemed to give up. And in and, and you know, us being on gravel bikes, we're on drop bar bikes, so that's a like a traditional road style bike with bigger tires. And so like I I was concerned with the climb, but I knew that everything that goes up has to come down and like if it, if we were going to be on the road and come down, I would be fine. But I mean, my arms were cramping, my legs were cramping, and I knew that if we went down the hill that we just climbed, my God, like it was. I was more concerned about going down because I was afraid my body would seize and I would dive off the side of the mountain. Like seriously, it was. It was. Uh, so luckily, we had a little bit going through, but we made it over to Linville and it was that, where did we stop was that um where we ate uh Wiseman's, my, Wiseman's Wiseman's seriously if if you ever get a chance and you're at Linville uh Waterfall Linville Gorge definitely mm -hmm. make it over to Wiseman's I had never made it and I think one of you gentlemen said it's like called the Grand Canyon of the East Coast and it yeah, that's is what they call Limbo Gorge. Oh, that's mm -hmm. what they call Limbo. It, it was gorgeous. Like it was it was something that I like definitely made it worth the climb. Um, but it was just gorgeous. So Wiseman, uh Wiseman's Gorge, is that what you said, guys? Wiseman's view. Wiseman's, Wiseman's view. view. That's yeah. the overlook. Gotcha. And so we get to Wiseman's and it is just uh it's like what was what was frustrating is you get to Wiseman's and you think, okay, well now we're uh, now we're done, and we were not done. Like we still had more climbing, and uh, yeah, like it, Sam, you knew a little bit about what was still to come because, like, mm -hmm. like it was it was brutal. I'm going to show another picture, which is me walking, like, um, and it just God, it just never stopped and. It was slightly comical. This is a photo of us at Wiseman's um, because I, I, I'm a pretty, I'm not a n newbie on the bike and I've climbed quite a bit and done some long rides, but this was, when we got to Wiseman's and I think that was like at mile 35 or maybe 
32, something like that. And we yeah. still were halfway done. Like, we weren't even halfway. I was like, okay, this is going to be hard. And and it was. So, uh, yeah, yeah, like. And it was tough, too, because, you know, like you were saying, the climbs were really steep and they would, like, get really punchy and you'd, like, work up a sweat. And then, like, you'd plunge down for, like, a quarter mile, just freeze, like, all that sweat you just built up, like, just freezes. Because it's still, like, 34 degrees out, you know? Yeah. It never got, like, really warm. Yeah. Like, you'd get really hot on these punchy climbs, freeze on the downhill, and then, like, immediately you're back to, you know, this quarter mile, half mile, you know, climb that's at, like you were saying, a 30 pitch grade. Um, So, it's a yeah, it's a tough, like, I've driven that road countless times so i kind of knew what i was getting into but you know you forget all the uh intricate uh the length of, you know driving something is a lot different than pedaling it um but yeah, yeah certainly it was it was definitely like leaving lunchtime and it's whatever it was 12 30 halfway done you're like oh you know we're not even like at the high point of the climb yet you know we still have a thousand more feet to go before you start dripping down into wilson's creek so yeah, and we, we were talking uh, before we started this that, like, you're in this balance of um, short days. And mm-hmm. so, like, that was something that Wes was bringing up. Is like, guys, we hit the road great, but you also – you don't know if the weather's going to be what it's going to be because it could be snow up there. It could be super windy. Um, it could be, mm-hmm. like – and then the day is shortening, and, and we get there, and I, I'm like – we definitely did take a, a good rest time at Wiseman's where, you know, we're resting longer than we probably should have. Cause I, th- I think the, I think Sam was like, Hey guys, we got to wrap this up or we're never going to get it done. And I know for me, myself, I was chugging a Coke, like, Oh, are you kidding? I got to get back on. Uh, Eric, what, what were your thoughts leaving Wiseman? Well, it's interesting because, you know, looking back on it now, I'm pretty, I'm pretty glad I didn't know what came after Wiseman. Like you very, you very much had that. Okay. We've hit the peak mentality. Yeah. Once you get there, you've climbed, you have that beautiful view. Uh, you know, my, my thought when we got there and I think Aaron, you actually said this was, it doesn't feel like we're in North Carolina. Anymore. Yeah. Just not at this incredible skate, but, but yeah, getting back on the bikes and then going back to exactly that same feeling and grueling, like you, you're right. We took a long break, but it felt like we didn't hardly take any time at all. Once the legs got moving again, and, um, every train needs a caboose. And I definitely was the caboose on those uphill pushes. And, uh, anytime you guys need another caboose on there for you, but it was, uh, I was, I was looking at, especially Samuel, obviously taking off with that big brain on his mountain bike. He was, he was climbing hard and, and I kind of would see you hit your feet and maybe hike one. And once I saw you get off the, get off the saddle, I was like, all right, I've got to pass now to get off too and take a little bit of a walk to, to make this push. Yeah. Uh, so real quick gearing on your bike, uh, I think was very similar to mine. So you had two rings in the front, uh, and yep. then a, was it 11 third what was the back yeah uh, is what, uh, yeah so you know even in the granny year you kind of have that classic feeling where you've got to click for that one more and it it just wasn't there on some of those yeah. steep climbs um but i think it, it's interesting i think we going into it thought we might have a little bit of an advantage with the gravel bike setup but man comparing it to what sam had on that mountain bike with that big ring on the back it was that was definitely advantageous yeah i i agree with you because i had a very i had a 40 front uh sorry i had a yeah 40 front tooth and a uh, 34 11 in the back sam do you know recall your your uh ring setup yeah i have the uh, 11 speed 52 tooth yeah so he had the massive yeah. and your rear front was a 32 30. right that sounds right. Yeah. I mean, I I agree. Like, I went into it thinking that Sam brought a knife to a gunfight because I've done a lot of these rides. And, mm-hmm. you know, let me say this. I've done long rides and I've done gravel rides. I have never done a ride like this. Okay. So, but we go into the first climb and Sam's sitting up, you know, he's getting good lung. Like, he's been able to open his lungs. Like, a lot of things that you know a a traditional like gravel bike and staying in that position and and being comfortable and climbing wouldn't be that bad but 
man, this setup, uh, I definitely am working more on my quads because I want to do this right again, but I want it to be enjoyable. Like the mm-hmm. last time was just to get it done. And and this next time, I know I will definitely have a different gear set up on the bike. And I, I may even take a mountain bike because of how uh, successful Sam's uh, attempt and not attempt, but it was like victory over all of us uh, was. Uh, so uh, we get up there, we get to um, Linville, and I'm going to show a few more photos because we get over and Wes uh, documented us hitting the road and Sam is leading the pack and then you see me coming past uh, and then Eric right is right behind us. And then uh, we have to stop at Wes's truck because I think if I'm going to be honest with you boys, I was mentally struggling here bad. Like in the, like I didn't talk to anybody. I just was kept my head down. And um, I think Eric was chatting with me, but I was like, I was, I was in a bad shape because one, like you, you mentioned it earlier, Sam, you're either sweating or you're freezing because you've either climbed and I think at this point I was like overheating um because yeah, that was the hottest part of the day yeah for sure. yeah do you do you, either one of you recall how much y'all drank water wise I think I went through at least four or five water bottles thing refilling it you know the truck every now and then I was I was going through it pretty pretty quickly I mean especially on that front end but even there towards kind of when we hit some of those hills on the back end of the route um i I probably ended up drinking five bottles total i think i had two cokes when we stopped um but i honestly i I think i only had three bottles total and i and and i got back to the car and i i drank the bottles when i drove home i Mm -hmm. I think that was one of my problems is it was so cold that i didn't drink I, i very rarely drank anything um which made yeah, me maybe had like 80 ounces yeah i would think yeah and and i mean she's we were on in the saddle for was that i don't remember was, the full ride time i know it was, it was moving was like around seven yeah i think y'all were y'all were in it for seven eight hours yeah yeah it was it was super tough so we make it to make it to linville and then what is the next uh that was when we started we crossed over we saw was that beach mountain we were able to see yeah yeah i forget what that little like knoll was called um as you cross over linville into you know the wilson's creek sort of uh watershed um but that was i mean that was a tough climb in itself that final push um you know you just you were on the road for probably four three or four miles you know all uphill um and then that final climb was on pavement, but it was still like, you know. Is that the one we took the right turn long. on where the guy was chopping wood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Like, yeah, that was a punchy climb at the end. <laughs> yeah, we we turn, and I'm like, okay, it's not going to be that bad. And, like, freaking we go back up this stinking hard hill. And, it, like, I was like, man, we've already climbed. Like, how much more we got to, like – Cause I'm look so my my elevation was slightly off from all of yours, and so like w- I went into it thinking okay sixty five hundred feet because I think that's what it says on bike packing right it says on bike pack, yeah and so I I got sixty I got like six thousand feet while we were still on gravel one oh five and I'm like we only got five hundred feet the rest of this thing <laughs> this is gonna be easy <laughs> and mm-hmm. I and ended up with over seven thousand and I'm like. Yeah. freaking crazy yeah. but then what came next was you know pretty nice yeah 10 uh, 12 well, miles down yeah yeah 12 miles of downhill and and this is this is where sam's bike really excelled like he he definitely had a better gear in us than climbing but like I, I couldn't keep up with him downhill and i'm a pretty reckless downhill like rider like uh <laughs> Because I I had 35 millimeter uh, WTB uh, cyclocross tires. Uh, Eric, do you know the size of your tires? I had 700 by 40s. 700 by 40s. And Sam, mountain bike, 27 and a half, what? 
2.4. Yeah, 2.4s, <laughs> knobs on the side, like blasting through the berms. Full squish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, full squish. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, that, that was, that was uh, a lot of fun. Here's another photo um, because we went through this switchback section and uh, man, Wes in this photo is just gorgeous because he's shooting through the trees and you can see us, all three of us uh, together and then you can see us going away. And so he just, uh, it, it was great that Wes was there, one, documenting this um, because it was just like, it was gorgeous. Um, the scenery and the views there is just next level, but then to get like actual documentation of of what it was. I mean, I, I keep my camera and I tried to document it, but it all comes from first person point of view. Like, you know, you don't kind of get to see, um, you know, the three of you together unless I want to trek back and get my camera. And that is not fun. Uh, the people that do that, kudos to them. But we get off of that gravel road and we uh, cross over and we're close to the end, but we're not. And like boys, let's talk about let's talk about that little uh, stop that we stopped where, like, I collapsed because <laughs> it, I think that back you know call it that back twenty percent of the ride became a real mental game just because obviously you're up in the hills like it's windy roads but you come around that corner and you're expecting to see like a finish line of some sort whatever yeah. that looks for that segment for the ride but you'd hit that corner and then all you'd see is another winding up hill pass and i know exactly what you're talking about i think we were along the banks of wilson's creek and there was you know at one point where you, you just felt demoralized because you just did not know when it was going to open up yeah and when it eventually did we kind of at the very last we're, i mean we're 70 80 feet from the stop sign and it just the grade turns hard uphill and then there was this little old stone building with this small kind of covered porch off the front of it. And Aaron like hustles over and drops his bike right at the steps and just goes completely flat on his back. I mean, it was, it was the perfect representation of what the past 30, 40 minutes it looked like, which was just one unexpected climb after another. Yeah, Wes uh, took this photo that's showing right there and it's the front of the building and it's me with my arms to the side because like I, I i mean i can handle a lot of stuff like like i told y'all boys i had just done the 20 hour like move where i'd move for 20 hours i don't know like I, I honestly would say that this ride was physically harder than moving for 20 hours hmm. like because it because it required so much effort to climb those hills like it wasn't like like yeah we got some coasting but if you even if you were on the flat you were on gravel that has resistance so it was very rarely that you weren't having to put out an effort to to make a forward movement like Wes we get to that point what was your thoughts like like, just be real. Do you think, did you think it was like over? Like, we're going to hop in the back, especially okay, so with me. I'll be honest with you. When we left that stone house, I would just gotten service back. So I was looking at how far, how far back to the car, like how far back to your guys' car do we have to go? And I, when I saw it and I was like, oh man, they still got a ways to go. Like, this is, this is no, like, I thought we didn't have that far to go before I got service. And I got service. I'm like, I'm going to stay at the back of the pack. And I know I rode behind. I was not going to leave Eric behind. He talks about being the caboose. I didn't care if we did two miles an hour all the way back to Morganton. I was not leaving him behind. And so we cruised. I was like waving people by, you know, if, if Eric needed to pull over and take a, you know, a, a, a nap in the back of the truck, we would have stopped, but he was going to finish one way or the other. And it wasn't until we made it to the highway where I had to, I couldn't, I could no longer ride with you guys. And you guys quickly dipped off onto the greenway um, that I knew we were close. And you, you had like another couple of miles at that point. But I mean, it was even riding in the truck. I kept expecting to come around the turn and see the stop sign for the highway. Mm -hmm. And so Eric, I knew exactly what you meant by every time you come around, you're like, Oh man, there's another hill. Like, <laughs> 
these guys are these guys are dying and you're watching the sunset and i'm like at some point these boys are gonna be riding in the dark yeah <laughs> and and i'm just like just get to the highway and once we made it to the highway, I was like, they've got it. You guys were together. And we went on back and met you guys at the parking lot at that point. But yeah, uh, we yeah, were. It, it was tough. I, I, so I remember I, I told I, the goal was never to leave anybody stranded. It, it wasn't. Right. But it came to a point where I told Sam, I was like, Sam, I'm sorry, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get myself back. I cannot sit and wait. And I think we all like got to a point. I, I I ate these stupid fig newtons, and I think I got like at one point in time I was doing everything I could not to throw up because I was like so exhausted. But also I'd eaten these fig newtons, which terrible idea. Now I used to love fig newtons. Now I tried to eat one a few days ago, and I was like, can't do it. I'm about to overcome it because I love some fig newtons or did love fig newtons. But man, that last portion, I've went back and looked at the route, and I think I've figured out a way to cut out some of that last part because it it just I think if we rode I think if we've rode it any other time, it wouldn't be that bad. Like that last portion wouldn't be like detrimental like like it was. But man, it was it was hard. It was it was definitely a hard uh, push, uh, Sam. Um, he actually showed that he was human at one point in time because he was like, "Man, this is hard." Like, still hadn't got off his bike. Uh, it was a very validating feeling to hear him say that. It is like I, I told him I was like, "Man, it's great. I think you're human." Like, I even told I even ate uh, lunch uh, a few days ago with one of our friends, and I was like, "Okay." So I was on this ride with Sam, and Sam said it was hard, and I was like. Dude, that just made my day because <laughs> everybody knows Sam is like superhuman and and uh, just his effort. So we we get close back, but uh, some really cool things in Morganton. They have this. Uh, does anybody know what that uh, walking trail, bike packing or bike uh, route is called? Anybody, yeah. Do you know what I'm talking about? Where we we cross over the bridge and then we ducked off onto this walking path that led us all the way back in does anybody know the name of that the last little greenway stretch yeah it's probably just like Morganton greenway or named after the river that goes right through there yeah well whatever it is it's very very cool because it runs right along the river at one point in time there were shops it looked like that were um uh accessible to that i think it passes two two parks Um, because there's like at one point in time there was a baseball field then there was another park we went through and I think that's where we all stopped at the last and we're like are are we close? (laughs) and it just didn't it didn't yeah a little bit more but uh, so we'll wrap this up because we're we're almost there Uh, but we arrive back and I am exhausted Uh, we me and Sam were a part of this challenge where we had to to run and Sam that morning before the ride started you ran how many K's was that a 5k or 6k I want to say it was six yeah it was like four miles or something yeah so that validates my super him being superhuman uh because <laughs> that guy got up at like 5 a.m ran 6k and then did this long ride now I got home and ran a mile but it was only running a mile uh, because the only reason I was it was like a trot it wasn't even a run it was miserable but here's the crazy part okay that entire ride sounds crazy but y'all jokers camped out out that night oh yeah well (laughs) we we slept on 105 (laughs) I wouldn't really call it as like we went camping (laughs) she's like I drove back up. (laughs) Yeah, they drove back to what we had just climbed and did a fire or whatever in camp that evening. But um, yeah, it was. I I really one wanted Wes to be on because, dude, I I honestly do not know if this could be done at one seating, like on the bike, without uh, support that you brought, uh, the food that you brought the at least just mental moral uh mental break 
that you brought because like you were the sane one quite a few times where it's like oh guys you can keep doing it come on like and and i was like just shut up and get back in the truck because <laughs> it's just it was, uh that eric it was super nice meeting you on this ride and i mean like we had some great conversations uh cannot wait to do something like this again uh i will be attempting this ride again so hopefully you will come join us again uh and hopefully we can course west into sagging or supporting again yeah. um and uh, at, at some point in time this year, me and Sam are going to attempt to Everest in a day, which is how many feet of climbing? 29,000. <laughs> so we did 7,000 and we thought it was hard, but I think we calculated if we climbed 105 12 times would be the elevation. Yeah. Yeah. Wes, if you need an extra extra person and support vehicle for that one, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll just get a camp spot at somewhere at the top. You guys keep driving by. I'll be there. Gosh, <laughs> dude. Well, guys, I really appreciate you hopping on, and this was a lot of fun. Like, seriously, um, thank you, uh, Eric, for doing your research, Sam for doing your research, and Wes for supporting it. It could not have been done without you guys. And so uh, – For the Suffer Club, my name is Aaron, and uh, we will catch you next week on Thursday at 5 p.m. Adios.